During the height of the space race around 1960, the Soviet Union faced a new problem. Cosmonauts returning to Earth often found themselves landing in remote and challenging areas. This led to the need to create specialized teams for their extraction, mainly because much of the vast Soviet territory was covered by extensive tundra. This is where Vitaly Andreevich Grachev, a legendary figure in the history of the Soviet automotive industry, comes into play. Renowned for being the cornerstone of Zeal's success, he was distinguished by his suspensionless truck designs, which we already talked about previously, as well as numerous other innovations that formed the foundation for most of his creations. At that time, the foundations of off-road vehicle design were already in place in what was known as the Grachev School. This school was built on the basic principles of constructing all-terrain vehicles at Zill, which primarily included aspects such as minimal weight, the largest possible tires, maximum ground clearance, all-wheel drive, front and rear steering wheels, independent torsion bar suspension, sealed brakes, gasoline engines, among many others. In 1966, a couple of vehicles were adapted for this task, including one equipped with a crane and a platform to transport the vehicle from the descent, and another with a special chassis for transporting the astronauts. While this could be considered the first generation of trucks for this purpose, it was in 1971 that Grachev presented the prototype for the second generation of these machines. The production of the first units of this new generation began in June 1975, becoming a complex of specialized trucks. Building on the initial idea in the first generation, two versions of the same truck were created, one for cargo, known as Zill 4906, and another for passengers, named Zill 49061. Although it is not certain why, these vehicles were mostly known as Bluebirds, sporting a distinctive blue color that made them stand out in the environments in which they operated. Both trucks were equipped with the tried and tested enhanced gasoline engine from the Zill 130, which provided a power output of up to 150 horsepower and allowed them to reach speeds of up to 75 kilometers per hour. Due to the nature of their operations, these trucks had a remarkably high ground clearance, approximately nearly 0.6 meters. They also featured disc brakes and torsion bar suspension. However, one of the most peculiar aspects of these units was that they had to be adapted for air transport, as they were delivered to their operation sites by IL-76 and N-12 airplanes, or Mi-6 and Mi-26 helicopters. To achieve this, they maintained relatively compact, yet quite impressive dimensions, measuring 9.2 meters in length, 2.4 meters in width, and 2.8 meters in height. Given the necessity of managing weight effectively, the decision was made to construct the units on a chassis made of aluminum profiles and a body entirely crafted from fiberglass. Despite these efforts, the final model still had an empty weight of 8.3 tons. Their technical capabilities and all-wheel drive enabled them to move easily through deep snow, swamps, and sand, as well as traverse wide ditches and eliminate almost all conditions where one might get stuck. Moreover, they possessed amphibious qualities, as some of their operations required access to lakes, allowing them to reach speeds of up to 15 kilometers per hour while afloat. As for the personnel transport model, its cabin could accommodate four people and had three pairs of stretchers. In the rear section, it featured a compartment equipped with medical equipment, storage for supplies, an upgraded climate control system, as well as everything necessary to ensure a fully autonomous stay for up to three days. Meanwhile, the model designed to function as a cargo truck was primarily used to transport the return capsules in which the astronauts landed. However, 
Because these trucks still didn't possess the absolute qualities that would allow them to cross the entire country, they played a crucial role in operations in remote and inhospitable locations. This truck carried another smaller unit designed as a support vehicle, which went into operation when the off-road capabilities of the wheeled vehicles were exhausted. Known as the ZIL 29061, this vehicle consisted of a unit propelled by rotating screws, which proved highly efficient in environments like snow or swamps. Its propulsion was powered by two VAS 2103 engines, each with 77 horsepower, allowing it to reach speeds of 14 km per hour in water and up to 25 km per hour in snow. Since its task was to complete the final leg of the journey to the landing area, it had a 72-liter fuel tank, providing a fuel efficiency ranging from 20 to 33 liters per 100 kilometers. The cabin of this small unit was designed to provide essential medical care. Behind the driver's seat, there was a medical chair, and there was space on the sides to place stretchers for transporting astronauts in a supine position. As expected, a heating system was also incorporated into this cabin to maintain a comfortable environment for both the operator and the rescued cosmonauts. From the conception of the prototype, through the production phase, and up until before the collapse of the Soviet Union, a total of 26 trucks were produced, 12 of the cargo model, 14 of the passenger model, and 5 screw-propelled units. Although these vehicles underwent modifications over time, including the implementation of new and sophisticated radio navigation systems that made it easier to locate astronauts, they have retained their essence throughout the years, even going on to serve the Air Force in 1985. Their remarkable reliability, along with measures taken from the 1980s to extend their lifespan, has ensured that these units endure to this day and are still in use. As of 2007, the Russian Air Force had five units of the 4906 and six of the 49061 model within their ranks. Although they no longer operate in exploration and rescue missions, they remain essential for specific tasks. This undoubtedly demonstrates that the Bluebird complex has been the most successful Soviet automotive development in its field. Before you go, we'd like to recommend our channel, Gear Unlimited. You'll find excellent content on various topics that we're sure you'll enjoy. Thank you for joining our community. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, like, and turn on the notification bell. Until next time.